All right, welcome everybody. We are going to wait a couple minutes to get things kicked off. So thank you all of you for coming in and for everyone that's clicking a button and watching on Facebook, what is going on? Um, I know my background doesn't look as cool as Sean Murphy's. Uh, so I got, I got to step up my game. Is that like a couple faces? I'm loving the orange. Is orange your color or what's up with that, Sean? Yeah, orange is color and uh, my, the, the, my, my company is Mental Profit. So in there's the swirling of the ideas and what comes out is usually what's called our history. As long as we're uh, looking forward, we can, uh, we can really adjust our trajectory. Right on. Well, I dig it. I, I knew that if it was there, it's because it had to be intentional. So I figured I would ask. And I see we just have Jeff Outgilbert as well. So hey, hey. Jeff. Jeff in the house. What's hey, happening? Jeff in the house. <laughs> so it's going to be a, another heavyweight, heavyweight bout today. And we'll, we'll kick it in and we'll lay down kind of the overall what's happening once we have uh, our other Sean jump on and we go live. We'll, we'll kick it in. So yeah. Sean okay. Two minute advantage. He was here uh, two minutes earlier. So you got a little bit more context. Okay, good. Good. So a any preference between who, who speaks first between the both of you? you? Want to do like a virtual rock, paper, scissors or? Oh, makes no difference to me. Sean's great. Yeah, Jeff is great. This is like, I'm loving this. We're going to have some fun. <laughs> hey, Sean. <laughs> I love it. Sean love says it. three minutes. He'll be right there, guys. I was right. just out trim I was out trimming the roses and putting bird feed in the feeders while you know I had to rush back here to do this. <laughs> nice. I love it. So you said you were you were placing what in the feeders? Bird seed. I call right it on. really bear seed, bear seed. Because then I have these big black bears, they'll come and they'll wipe them out, man. They'll <laughs> Oh, this is incredible with for the both of you for making the time to be here with the rest of our community. So let's just Oh, that's great, it. man. I mean, we're we're in a quarantine situation. So that's why I'd say we've got nothing but time. You know? I love it. Yes. So time is what we have. And that's what we're taking advantage of. So for everyone um, that's watching either on YouTube, I hope you caught the morning huddle. If you didn't, go to unblindedhuddle.com. These two gentlemen were on there this morning. And it was absolutely electrifying. So what you both have done in the world, and more importantly, what you're focused on doing in the world, pretty exceptional. So having you two, Sean, myself, and the Unblinded Movement here together is something special for sure. Sean just sent me something to add to my timeline. So yeah, good. All right, right on. I just added it. Beautiful. So let's keep rocking. We got about another 60 seconds and then jump off. Sean, how are you doing? I'm doing good, brother. Great to see you. Great to have you here. Um, love everything that you're doing. Thanks for making the world a better place, brother. Who, well, who, who'd have thunk we'd have this much influence when we started? <laughs> oh, gosh. You know, it's, and it's crazy right now, as you know. It's just, uh, but you know, this is the thing we've been pushing so strongly is uh, working from home. I've been pushing for years for leaders to get better at this, but now they're half, they have to, you know, so it's a good thing in that sense. Yeah, it's, uh, people have lost their ability to have control and so now fear sets in and so I'm so glad. Yeah, that's right. We've that's had our biggest day. We had a million dollar day on the 16th and uh, we crashed the system on the 31st. So you know, you know why that's happening. So Yeah, I've never seen anything like it in mm -hmm. all my years of network marketing. I was shocked, you know, when they, you know, gave me my figures. I said, mm, I don't think that's correct, but <laughs> yeah. No, it's uh, it's neat to get a pay raise. When but it will, will be interesting is April, though. Yeah, that's going to be, and this is where this is where the glue hits the road is the retention ability, the ability. Yeah, to that, that's what I'm concerned about, and you know, and then if we don't have any disruptions, you know, because we've got a lot of international markets that we service. Yep. So, yeah, yeah. We've, we've been able to keep stuff in going into Latin America pretty consistent. So that's. That's good right now. Even though some of our distributors, the borders got closed, they couldn't get back to their country after an event. But <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, actually, we had a big event planned in Colombia. There was going to be eight thousand there. Wow! But that was let me see, two and a half weeks ago, and the government canceled the event. Yeah, they canceled ours in Costa Rica. The the president shut down the convention center 
the Monday of our week of our event, we finally pulled it off Tuesday at 3 a.m. and said, yep, we're, we're continuing, and we pulled it off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they have no choice. No, they don't. I, I mean, I wish they got more serious about the U.S. I mean, it's, that's what I'm concerned about is how far it's going to go here, yep. you know? Hey, guys. Hey, hey. Hey, Sean. How are you? Doing great, sir. Yeah, no. Thank you, gentlemen, for, for being here. And sorry for being delayed a moment or two. Lots of dynamic things happening uh, at this moment. But thank you for being yes. here. Yeah. Yes. So, Fernando, yeah. yeah. So, j just let me set this parameter. Um, so, I've been giving deep thoughts to this influence off dynamic. And since there is such a neutral playing field, such a neutral playing field, I think the best way. Um, to go forward with this in the influence off would be each of these fine, incredible, iconic gentlemen um, influencing, going from hello to yes, in their, thank you, in their own space of working with them um, in the world of network marketing. I think that is a pure, clean access point. Uh, does that sound like a fair access, Sean uh, and Jim? Mm. I mean, Jeff? Yeah. 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 No problem. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Fernando, sound clean? Sound clean. So we'll have them um, go head to head. Sean was here first, so we'll have, uh, we'll have him go first. And we'll have them both influence each other on the world of network marketing. So let's do it. Yeah. And, and we're doing, the uh, uh, first one was audio, but we're doing this, we're doing a video in this case. Correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I see. Okay. okay. Yep. And we're doing this like. You're well, that's too bad. I mean, when it was an audio, I could dance around and. Get my physiology going, you know. I, I look really good. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go, Jeff. Here we go, brother. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it it's it's <laughs> right? It's Helodias, and we are going to have 15 minutes for each of you, and then we'll do teaching, learning, and other things. So it's 15 minutes on the clock max, and the yes that you're seeking is a yes of this other person um, working with you in your business and going forward. So uh, take it away, Fernando. Ding, ding. Beautiful. So ding, ding. Let's jump on in. Welcome, everybody. Live ecosystem, unblinded. We have rock stars in the building again. And of course, we have Mr. Callagy sipping on some water, getting ready to get this thing going off. So let's introduce our two, uh, let's not call them fighters, let's call them friends today, uh, but they're gonna be going head to head and who knows who's gonna win. Somebody's gonna be knocking someone out, somebody's gonna be falling off one chair, uh, but I think overall we're gonna hug, we're gonna learn and we're gonna teach. So outside of the entertainment, view everything that happens here through the prism of the formula, integrity-based human influence, because we're gonna be having Sean Murphy, who is an international respected, known network marketer, executive speaker, trainer, and consultant, 14 years experience in the industry and has over 300,000 distributors and a really cool background, which we do not have, but he does. And then we have, of course, on the other side, we have Jeff with 40 years in the industry starting in 1978. He gave me permission to date him, which is interesting. <laughs> and on top of that, he is in the world of contribution and giving back to schools and feeding these children. And he's also built a base of 750,000 in 56 different countries. So this is what it's going to look like. We're gonna have Sean go first. These gentlemen know each other. As soon as we hit the thing, they do not. The foe and the fight begins, and they're gonna go from hello to yes in 15 minutes in the world, having the other person say yes to join the world of network marketing. So it is 2.10. I will be jumping in with a couple dings and five minute warnings, and then when the 15 minutes are up, microphones down. So Sean Murphy, you're up first. Mr. Callagy, anything you wanna to add to our two contenders here today before we get started? No iconic people leading hundreds of thousands of people each. And what we're gonna demonstrate is what it looks like. And then that there's always access to even more acceleration, even for geniuses like this. So here we go. Here we go, Sean Murphy, 15 minutes starts now. Hey, listen, hey Jeff, I appreciate you being here. Um, listen, before we get started, how much time do you have for this conversation we're about to ensue in? Oh. Well, of course, they gave us the timeline, right? So okay. I'm here. So let me ask you this. Before we get started, you, you know, I, I want to make sure that I bring value to you because this is about you. Um, I'm going to continue to do what I love to do. Let's see if we can't find out if, if in this conversation, you'll have a chance to do more of what you love and less of what you don't. Can I ask you three quick questions? Right. Go ahead. 
first thing is, hey, do I have your permission to help? Not that I'm going to teach you anything because words don't teach, but do I have your permission to let you see things possibly a little bit differently in the course of this conversation? Would that be okay? Yeah, sure. Awesome. So here's the second question. It's a tough one because if you answer it, well, let me just ask it. Do I have your permission to make you feel just a little bit uncomfortable? Because if you're going to go after something you've never had before and achieve something you've never done before, you might have to think a way you've never thought before. So I don't know if you'll say yes at the end of this, but right now in this conversation, is it okay if we have a dialogue that allows you to possibly see things a little different and it might make you feel a little uncomfortable? Do I have your permission to make you feel a little uncomfortable? Don't scare me, but... Oh, definitely not, because if you answer this one right, you're going to love question number three. So on question number two, is it okay? Just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, okay, Absolutely. good. And so here's question number three. Before I leave you today, is it okay if I take you out of that uncomfortable feeling? Because you know what? A scared mind can't really take action. So would it be okay if you felt comfortable at the end of our conversation that you actually you learned something you either learned you're going to take action on something or learned at least this isn't a, a direction you want to go would that be okay yeah absolutely awesome so your current situation that you're in the reason that you 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 accepted the one-on-one -on -one conversation that we're talking about this business called network marketing did you have some experience in it as as an entrepreneur um, to, to, to figure out, you know, what it is that you want to build in your, in your future. Do you, do you have any ideas? No, I've been pretty much uh, a guy that's traded time for money. You know, that, you know, uh, I'm retired now, so a uh, little bored, but yeah, I'm retired. Well, well, and here's the thing, you know, when, when you say retired, I love that. I love that you've been able to take your life to a moment to where you can actually take some time to smell the roses. I guess the question then would become is if, if that time that you have, that's the retired time, mm. what would be the return for you? What would you be looking to turn that retired time into? Is it something to do more time with your grandkids to be able to, 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 to maybe pay off some debt for your kids? Maybe it's to take some trips you haven't taken in a while. What would that retired time look like for you? Well, as you know, we're not taking any trips right now. Right. But my 401k has gone in the toilet. So uh, I lost a lot of money already. So concerned about the future. And uh, I don't know. Yeah, sure. Uh, like a lot of baby boomers, uh, we need more, more income if we're going to have a comfortable, you know, retirement. Have you, have you ever have you ever worked from home before? Uh, do you have that discipline to take and to, to, to do the right steps necessary to 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 create some success from home? Well, my wife works me from home all the time. She gives me the trash and says, take it to the street or go out and mow the grass and things like that. So, you, so, uh, you know, outside of that, you know, I would say, no, like I said, I've, I've always been punching the clock, so, so to speak, most of my life. Well, if I was able to introduce you to a, a group of successful entrepreneurs that you could plug into, that you could leverage, when's the last time you were on a winning team? Has it been a while? Maybe, maybe. Oh, that's in high school. That's when I played basketball. So if I showed you a winning team, could you go back to your high school days and see how if you, if you were able to partner with this group, of, this group of individuals, could you feel what it would be like to be on a winning team again? Maybe it's been 40 years. Would it, that be okay? No, I, yeah, I love it. I love that concept. So what we're, what we're going to do is, listen, so if you decide that the next step, right? My daddy said the only reason you have a presentation is to set the next appointment. If you decide the next step would be to, to meet that winning team, to have an introduction there, to see if you could fit in, to participate in it. Here's the neat thing. <clears throat> what I'm doing with you right now is the training for what you need to do to create this home-based business. So if you could let me do this for somebody else on your team, would that be okay if you introduced me to somebody and let me do all the talking? Could that be a part of the, the winning system you could plug into? Well, it sounds interesting. So interesting is awesome, but that usually what that usually means is I, I didn't do a good job explaining it. What, 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 what's, what's interesting? I'd have to hear the presentation. You just heard it. What I'm sharing with you right now is the presentation. Is it okay if you plug into a – because right now, does it really – what would make you say no to an opportunity? Let me ask you that. If it compromises my core values. Yeah, so we gotta make sure it doesn't do that. And, and have you ever had a job that you started with that was a pretty good job and then at some point in time it compromised your core values and you said you're right. not gonna be here? 
So would it be fair to say that we've been able to do some things to help people just like you get started and, and you really won't know how the core, the core values get compromised unless you get started. So let me ask you this, here's a real tough question and this could end this call real quick. Have I made you feel at all like you've compromised your core values in this conversation? So no, far? not at all. So if, if, if this is a reflection of what we're about to enter into. Now, here's the good thing. The great news about our business is the people. You know what probably is the not so good news about our, our business sometimes? <laughs> is the people. So you may run across some folks that you absolutely love, and then I'm going to ask you to avoid the people you don't. Would that be okay if you avoided the folks you oh, don't? Oh, that would be great. That might be my, boss, my former boss. <laughs> oh, there you go. So, here, so here's a question for you. Would it be okay... If, if we just agreed to take the next step, and the next step would be for you to, to dive in a little bit more, to make another decision, to see if it's the right call, because at any point, guess who's always in control? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So would you be okay with taking the next step? I'd be okay with that. Awesome. All right. So we are time. That was six minutes. So you are early. Nice. Sir. All right. Clap it up. So, so let's jump in for a sec. Uh, Sean, you are uh, truly masterful. Um, so, Fernando, what did you hear that was truly outstanding? Because I heard a bunch. Uh, what I heard that was truly outstanding was in the building of emotional rapport, there was questions two, three, four, and five. It was a uh, great into, you know, if this all happens your way, where are you going? Pain and yes was used step two very well. Um, and then in the leaning in, in agreement formation, when he tapped into interesting could mean speaking into the listening of what Jeff was saying when he was only saying the word interesting, that was great as well. So I'll pause there and kick it back to you, Sean. Yeah. So, and how about for you listening out there um, into the comments, into the Facebook uh, or unblinded Facebook page as well, be communicating about what you saw optimally, right. Uh, and what you saw potentially that was um, opportunity for optimization. So here's what I saw, Sean. Um, incredible. Uh, your emotional and energetic transference was outstanding. Um, your ability to connect Jeff to the possibility that there's, there's change and things he's not seeing. So we talk about disrupting certainty, ego, and knowingness, and that those opening questions were brilliant. That was one of the most brilliant opening preframes I've ever seen for a conversation. Uh, truly incredible like everybody can i tell you i'm shaking i because yeah. jeff is one of my peers he's one of my icons oh. <laughs> and, and i got to tell, what I'm are you talking shaking. about you're a genius 22 man. years in the profession so uh, go ahead sean <laughs> no, <laughs> no, i mean you, you're, you're you did awesome yeah he did right so <clears throat> now um i cut sean could i support you and everybody out there with a couple of thoughts oh gosh yes how, yeah okay so a couple of things I, um, I'm experiencing. We talk about in the program, it, the pre-frame was incredible. So let's lock this in sequentially. One, asking how much time he had. Absolutely phenomenal. The certainty with which you asked it was phenomenal. The emotional energy of transference, it was like fun meets aspirational meets Zeus and goddess. There was like a balancing of all four energies. Uh, truly phenomenal. Then three questions, uh, I never saw that before, and it was extraordinary. Um, so I will make you source on that and add that to our communications up front. Uh, everybody write that down and send Sean a giant thank you letter uh, or thank you note online and hit him. Sean, uh, Sean, truly unbelievable, right? Now, from there, what I felt, and I'll, I'm going to ask Jeff to give me the like, truth if, if he didn't know – if you didn't know Sean, what would, what would, at the end of that interaction, give me the three, the three words from your heart in service of Sean and everybody that you would use to describe Sean? You, you went home, you saw your wife, and she's like, how'd it go? Like, and you were just very transparent with her saying the three words you felt most about Sean. What would those three words be? Comfortable. Okay. What else? Interesting. 
integrity. Mm. What else? Curiosity. Okay. All right. Those are three good words. Fernando, from your seat or anybody online in the chat, you know, share your words. What would your three words have been? I'm going to go with comical. Comical. Be authentic. Fearless. Mm. I'm going to go with um, potentially scripted. Okay. I'm going to go with humility. Okay. So I would go with fun, salesy, and charismatic, okay? So Sean, if you're gonna pick three words that you would wanna leave somebody with at the end of this conversation, right? What would the three words you would pick after interacting with you in a hello to yes conversation? Authentic, heartfelt, professional. Okay, nice. And for you hear from Jeff, he was there. I would have had, I would have, you know, Fernando saying scripted, my saying salesy, I would have felt potentially um, that you're very good at, you're amazing at what you do. I'm not sure I would have felt um, super connected to you. I would have definitely been inspired by you. Um, and um, my trust would have been, I'll go with a 7.58, right? Like in that zone, like not that, I, not that I had affirmative distrust, but I wouldn't have been moved to like having trust. So I, because there was a dynamic where uh, Jeff wasn't that involved, right? So if I could give a distinction, and I always understand there's time, right? But what if we went something like this? So you have your, your, your framework up front, right? Of, and, and Jeff, let's pretend you, you know, you're retired, you know. Right, right. Let's, same, let's say, same, same, same scenario, right? So Jeff, Jeff has his uh, time frame, and he has the, the beautiful three opening questions that, that you um, shared. Amazing. I'm going to go with this. Um, and so, hey, Jeff, knowing we have those 15 minutes and we have those upfront agreements, the most important thing here is understanding you and what you want. So if I could ask you this question, where are you from originally? Where John Templeton is from, Winchester, Tennessee. As in John Templeton, Sir John, Sir, Sir, Sir John, John Templeton, Sir John, in a small, small, tiny Tennessee town that few know about. That's where I'm from. Incredible. Wow. And so where do you live now? Gatlinburg, about uh, Tennessee, about three and a half hours from there, or three hours, I guess, been out past you drive. <laughs> but right, right across from the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. All right. I, I'm hearing, uh, am I hearing correctly, a love and a pride in Tennessee? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very cool. Have you lived, uh, has that been your entire life in Tennessee? No, no, not at all. Actually, I was overseas. I lived on the island of Guam for almost six years before I moved to Gatlinburg. How, how does one go from Guam I'm sorry, from Tennessee to Guam, back to Tennessee. How does one do that, Jeff? Try to get away from your former wife. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that work out for you? It worked out quite fine, because she doesn't like flying over the ocean. <laughs> okay. So, and what, what'd you, can I ask, what'd you do in Guam? So on the island of Guam, actually, I, I, I worked for a company and serviced 10 Asian countries from there. That was, it's a U.S. territory, so they have U.S. dollars, U.S. restaurants, things I'm familiar with. And yet, within a few hours, I can be just about anywhere in Asia. Okay, look, footnote drop. 
is, Fernando, are you sensing Jeff is speaking more and coming more forward than when he was listening earlier? Yes, we've definitely gotten a lot more of his identity in this conversation. All right. Jeff, are you feeling, what's your feeling of connection right now towards me, honestly? Good, very good. Because you're, at, you're, you're asking questions, you're taking an interest in me. Right, okay. Not that Sean so, didn't, of course he did. But, uh, no, he, he did, he did. Yeah. But, you're, but there's also a psychological dynamic in the upfront rapport building mm. where when somebody's engaged and communicating. Right. I love, ev so I love everything Sean did. I do too. In, connect in connecting you to your he pain. He killed it. <laughs> killed it. Yeah. Connecting you to your pain. Yes. Love it. But I see I what you're doing. I see what you're doing. You're lingering. I call it lingering. When you ask a question, somebody gives a response, and you ask another question to draw them out further. You know, yeah. it's, it's good. Yeah, and it's all based on the things that you're sharing, that I'm hearing. Like you said, Sir John Templeton with pride about Tennessee. You said Tennessee, great smoky mountains, and nobody says anything for no reason. So you told me Sir John Templeton and Smoky Mountains for a reason. And my hallucination is because that you love Tennessee. Right. You're proud of Tennessee. Right. You love where you grew up. You right. love the Smoky Mountains. Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. And so I heard you. And I'm showing you I heard you. And when people are heard, they feel, they feel real good. So when it comes to then Sean sharing what he's going to share at the latter steps, this is an, this is an and – to Sean's incredible presentation, not an or. Mm. Like these are additions. I wouldn't change anything he did. Right. I would simply add to it. I would insert this right after the three upfront agreements prior to him getting into pain. So I would, and for the sake of time, let me progress. I would ask this question. So, so where are things now for you, Jeff? Oh yeah, so I live in Gatlinburg. Um, I'm retired. And uh, stay busy in the yard working. My wife gives me honey a honey do list of things to do, and that's what I do. <laughs> I appreciate your sense of humor, sir. I'm not. I'm a southerner. <laughs> <laughs> so, is 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 this it? Meaning, and there's nothing wrong with it being it. Like, is this it? Said differently, if you could have it all your way. Where does your life end? Like what else happens that hasn't happened yet? If anything. Well, certainly there's a lot more I'd like to do, but mm -hmm. a person only has so much finances, right? To work with and, and that yeah. can be limiting, yeah. you know? So yeah, there's more I'd like to do if yeah. I could do it. Yeah. And, and what would that be? So thank you for the but. Thank you for the but, but we don't want to deal with but right now. That's right. What I'd love to know is what it is that you want to do. Like what's your legacy, your dream for your legacy? Well, I'd like to get more involved uh, uh, with, my, with uh, a religious organization in the distribution of food and opening up more schools for impoverished children and, and uh, actually even helping uh, children get free from the sex trade. Mm. Wow. Wow. Anything else? Like, how do you get there? Oh, how do I get there? Yeah. Well, what, what needs to happen for you to get there? It's going to take resources, resources. It's going to take money. It's going to take time. Um, and based on a retirement income, that it'd have to come outside of that. All right, so I'm, I'm hearing that more income is something that you would, you would need to get to your leg. Yes. Okay. Can I ask you this question? Yeah, sure. You're good at questions. Yeah, you know why? Because you think. You, <laughs> because, and because you matter. Oh, thank you. Yeah, like what I want doesn't matter. So what I'm doing, Jeff, is I'm, I'm assessing whether or not our relationship might be a good fit for you. Because I don't want to talk to you about something that's a waste of your time. No, I so appreciate for, that. 
Yeah. So for example, if you told me you had everything you wanted and your honeydew list was everything for you and you're all good and all done, I give you a hug and say, congratulations on a beautiful life, brother. But that's not what you told me, is it? No. Okay. So I do ask you this though, a lot of people have dreams. So I'm not surprised you have a dream. What I would love to know though, is how important is that dream to you? Like if you never got to a place of freeing these young ladies from the horrific torture of sex trafficking, you never were able to help your church more, would you be okay with that? Like how much does it matter to you? It matters a lot. Okay. I'm a big believer in it. So, so you gotta do something then. Like you're not gonna accept well, I'd like to give more than a couple of hundred dollars a month yeah. to help free them. And that's not much, but it's what I can do. All right. Presently. So can I, would it be okay if I shared a little bit about myself? I'd love. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. So listen, hey, Sean, what's uh, going time check? 2.30. Yeah. yeah. So my name is Sean. And I have the unique and incredible honor and privilege to lead a group of 300,000 people who want more. And there's an extraordinary opportunity and possibility. Mm. Yeah. And what I'm assessing is how you, would, how you would see your future differently if you gave me the honor and privilege of working with you together. Now, Sean Murphy, jump in from here. In this moment, take it from here. In two minutes, do what you did before and take it home. Jeff, you know, you sharing the, the idea that you want to really help those girls. Let me ask you this question. Sure. A year, a year from now, the, the, the organization that you donated money to, they tell you a number of girls have been saved. What number would absolutely just bring you to the floor what number if they said jeff because of your donations because of your commitment you have been able to help this number of girls what number would that be for you well of course i'd like to help them all whatever that number is but it sounds speaking, like we got a lot of work to do what number would what number would it just absolutely i mean I, 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 but i i'm going from my perspective of what i can see in front of me based on my circumstances you know, is, is that, but if, if I could, if I could help free a thousand, that would uh, blow my mind. So what if you were able to tell the next person, if you decided that this opportunity made sense for you, if you said yes to this opportunity, you could say you partnered with a company that's going to allow you the resources to free over a thousand girls. Would you really have to learn a whole bunch of new training or a whole bunch of new language? Wouldn't your mission be bigger than the mess that's happening right now? Absolutely. So maybe we can help get started. Why don't we take the next step and figure out if we don't offend any of your core values and you can find a way that you can see absolutely that a thousand girls could be saved from, from today moving forward. I'd love to partner with you on that. That'd be okay. That'd be okay. All right, Sean, how did that, and, and this is all real and raw. So not looking for any false compliments, not looking for any holdbacks. How did you feel about that assertion? Oh, absolutely. Again, this is, listen, for anybody that's watching this, the recording or a lot, this is totally raw. We had like half a minute to, okay. And now I'm, I'm being, tr truly, there is no script here. I'd be, I'm being yeah. quote, pitted against a very dear friend of mine <laughs> to try to convince him. But the mindset, right? This whole idea. And so normally the beginning would be more of that, but I just, I jumped into you know, who we are when we get squeezed is who we are. So yeah. absolutely, it makes it so much better because now, if, right now it's a point A. And when they get to point B, whether they're with me or not to make that next decision, that point B, the story's gotta be strong enough in order for them to be able to remember why they said yes at point A. Yeah. So that insertion of the thousand girls, if he, ever want, if he ever decides to quit, quote, quit the business, I'll say, have we got a thousand girls yet? Nope, let's get mm -hmm. back to work. That's right. Yeah. No, That's right. Sean, Sean, this is, this is an honor. The, the humility, the openness, the vulnerability that you incredible salespeople 
leaders, enrollers, teachers, educators, the both of you uh, are sharing, it's, it's drop the mic. And that's what this is all about because this is in service of the people watching to create their acceleration. And I'm gonna just declare this right up front. Uh, we are just launching our influence offs. So what I don't wanna do is have these two gentlemen not go forward. So they're both going forward, right? <laughs> they're both going forward into the influence off because I have a feeling that these, pe these two, uh, Sean and Jeff, I mean, these are gonna be people that are gonna be around a long time in the influence off rounds. These are straight up geniuses. Damn so nice. phenomenal, phenomenal. And, Brandon, and you, you, if I can, oh, sorry. Please, yeah, no, if you I go could, Yeah, say one thing. Here's the thing, there's not one way to present. Uh, everybody's personalities are different. And that's what makes, um, I, I, why I love this profession is because the most important thing that you can sell, and I, or, and I, I don't consider myself a salesman at all, and I never liked sales. You know, if that sounds yeah. strange, okay. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, the, only I, reason, the only reason we call this unblinded sales mastery is because nobody would know what it was unless we put that word in it. So right. and I'd nothing wrong with that this, word because it's in, fact, good influence. Yeah. in fact, that's what we're doing. Yeah. But it's not the way I feel. Absolutely. I don't feel like I'm selling. Oh, I you agree. Know, you know what I mean? Yeah, brother. So, so it's, I, what, I, what, I, what I've always believed is the most important product that you sell is not in your warehouse. It's you. You have to sell you. you if they buy you, they'll never stop buying your product. Amen. Mm. Drop the mic. So can we hear from a genius now and reverse this? And let's watch this unbelievable genius um, Don't share and sell himself. Sound good? <laughs> yeah, it sounds good. It All right, sounds Fernando, good. let's kick it off. All right, ready? We're going to go back. Jeff, you're stepping in. Hello to yes. You still have your 15 minutes, and the clock starts now. Okay, and I'm talking to Fernando or Sean? Hey, you are talking to Sean Murphy. Oh, so Sean, okay, there other? he is. There I he lost is. him. Hey, Sean. Hey, hey nice Mr. Al, uh, is it Al, Al, Al Gibbers? How do you say, what's that? Like? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, you just killed it. But I'll tell you what, you can call me what you want. But uh, yeah, it's Alt Gilbers. Alt, Alt Gilbers. Hey, yeah. But just call me Jeff. I will. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, it's one of those old German names, you know? So... I, I don't know you too well, and I, I appreciate this time with you, Sean. I really do. So uh, if, if you don't mind me asking, you know, uh, what is it that you currently do now? Well, um, not, every day I'm working to be a better dad, better husband. Um, I ask my uh, family on a scale of 1 to 10, how is I as a dad and a husband? And most weeks I get a pretty good scale, but since they've been home during this whole corona thing, <laughs> uh, the numbers seem to be slipping. <laughs> Oh, boy, do I know where you're coming from. I'm going through the same thing with my 11-year-old uh, um, son. We had this conversation last night, and he was playing Star Wars and fighting the Empire, and then he came to me and said, Daddy, I'm bored. I said, how can, how can you be bored when you're fighting the Empire and you're protecting my house? You know? I don't have to worry about Darth Vader tonight, you know? Well, the, the, the games only get more interesting. I got a 16-year-old. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Now you say that they're they're homebound, so they go to public school, or yeah, Mason Mason went to public school, and uh, spring break happened for us here in the Dallas area, and uh, then they extended it one week, two week, and now it's back to May. But the big challenge is, is that he was a big lacrosse player, right? Now, thank goodness he's only a sophomore, and the seniors are really having an issue because I was on the board of the directors of of the lacrosse group, so it's it's a little challenging right now, right? Those emotions that are running high. Yes, I get, I get what you're saying. I feel the same. You know, the one thing that I um, did appreciate, despite the hardships of what we're going through right now, it's a great time for families to be together where sometimes we're all going different directions. We're so busy in our lives in business or school or, or academics or, or games, if, you know, things like that, playing games and um, ball games and, and such. But now what about your work situation? How's that affected it? Well, um, I guess it's, it's, it's 
it's it's been a challenge. Um, I do some I do some work from home. I do a little bit of coaching on the side, and I'm trying to ramp that up a little bit. But you know, you need some resources to do that. And uh, but uh, you know, I'm learning how to uh, how to transition right because this 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 Zoom thing. This is like the second one of these I've been on. But I like everybody's using them. So I guess I don't know. I guess it's it's going to be interesting learning some new tips and tra tricks and techniques. I just got to find somebody that can help me with that. Me too, brother. I'll tell you what, I had to learn the Zoom thing as well. And, and I had to have my son show me how to upload a file or a video. And I'm like, good grief. So that, that's interesting, though. But uh, what do you coach on? What, what is it? Uh, tell me about your coaching. Well, it's, it's, it's about, um, it's kind of helping people who are in, in estate selling, uh, not selling estates, but estate planning. Uh, mm. how to how to help people overcome and that and that's booming but uh only because people are now scared 30 year olds are thinking about their estate where you know it's normally the 60 plus year old selling it so i guess there's a huge market out there for that i guess i guess everybody's looking for something right now so that that's kind of what it is in estate planning making sure people got their documents in place wow okay and so and how many years have you been doing that uh seven seven years and how has it turned out for you so far? I know you said you had some challenges. Well, good, but 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 imagine imagine your business model. You got you, you're you're speaking to sixty plus seventy year old individuals, and you think any of them? I don't care when this thing gets lifted. You think any of them are coming back to a meeting room? Right. Yeah. So right. it's going to be a huge issue. Yeah. It, it, there's no question about it. I've never seen a, a time such as what we're going through right now. And what it's done to the markets, what it's done to the uh, people's 401k, the stock market, uh, people that had jobs, don't have jobs. Yeah, but, you know, that's why I wanted to uh, speak with you and, and see. And this may not be for you, what I'm going to share with you. And it's okay if it's not. Thanks uh, for taking that pressure know. off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Myself, I, I have spent my lifetime, uh, most of my working years, um, mostly involved in a business model where I basically uh, work a model that we drop ship products to people around the world and it's a residual income. So what I love about it is I'm not trading time for money. In the beginning we do, I, in the beginning I spend some time with it, right? Uh, but over a period of times, and sometimes that might take more than a year, but what happens is, and, and keep in mind, this, my journey began 21 years ago, uh, that I, I spent my first year with some focus on that business, but so much of what that business has paid me has been residual income. Have you ever thought about, you know, residual income and what that would be like? Well, to I, not have time yeah, for money. I'm in, I'm in a mastermind with a, with a bunch of real estate folks and that, that's right. all I hear them talk about, right? Residual income. So I guess, I guess I got to get some money together to, to start buying, but who's going to rent? I mean, what's the whole real estate thing? It's like, yikes. So no, that's, that, tough. that's my understanding of residual income. Yeah. Yeah. It, no question about it. It is tough right now. And uh, you know, the, the model I would say that, that I've been involved with is so untraditional. So where we see businesses that have just clo closed down, I drove through my town the other day and it was a ghost town. And I didn't see anybody on the streets. And that's a town where we get millions of people coming in and no one's there. Wow. And yet, and yet, as strange as this sounds, as bad as things are out there for business, my business is booming. It's booming. Wow. And the reason is because of the fact that I've showed people how to build a residual income from their home. And if you're open to that, if you're open to me sending you a video, a presentation, again, it may or may not be for you, and it's okay if it's not, but I think it is. I think it is because I can tell by your, uh, your, your speaking, your coaching, your, just your style, your, your persona. You, it just seems like a good fit for you. Go ahead, you're gonna say something. Well, I, I, yeah, I mean, because it's, it's, it's one thing to talk about it. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. in coaching, right? Everybody, yeah, I'm not a yeah, yeah. I'm not follow you, but Got it's it. another thing to do it. I mean, what, what's mm -hmm. what I watch a video, then what? Oh, well, then we talk again. Okay, do, do we, we talk again? When do we do something? <laughs> mm -hmm.
Well, we're actually doing it now. Really? Yeah, sure. I, you, have you ever played baseball? Um, when I was, yes, Little League. <laughs> ball. <laughs> okay. Before you can go to second base, you got to go to first, right? Right. So what I'm doing right now is I'm giving you the invitation to look at something incredible, something that changed my life many years ago. Okay. And, and in fact, I have 100 people on my team that are millionaires. Now, this didn't happen by chance. It happened, it happened by design. It, it happened by intention. But they, they had an open mind to first looking at it. And I could tell you about it, but that wouldn't do justice because to experience something, you can't just hear it. You have to see it and you have to feel it. And that's why I started off with a video. The other reason why I do that is I'm showing you what to do if you choose to do this. In other words, I'm actually training you right now if you choose to do this business that this is the way we do it. So first base is the present is, excuse me, first base is the invitation. Second base will be the video. So uh, what I'm asking now is just that you, you be open to it, take a look at it. And then what I'm going to do, it's just 10 minutes. If you got 10 minutes now. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, yeah. So, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send you the link and then I'm gonna follow up. Five minutes later, just in case, you know, your wife gets your attention, you get distracted for a few minutes. I'm calling you in 15 minutes. <laughs> yeah, get her out of the room if you can. Just joking. <laughs> but I'm going to call you in 15 minutes. And then I want to know what you like best about that video. That's the purpose of the call. And then, and then we'll get into the questions that you might have. And um, is that okay with you? Does that sound like something you would be okay with? Sounds great. Sounds fair. All right. Now at this point, Sean has uh, already seen the video. So now yeah. I'm calling Sean back. I'm going to stay true to my schedule. 15, it's a 10 minute video. I'm assuming his wife distracted him for a few minutes, but so I allow just a few minutes in there and then I'm going to call him back exactly as I said in 15 minutes. And now here's where we are. And we're at second base, and that's the presentation. He's, he's going, he went through that, and now, yes, excuse me, and now we're gonna go to third base, because we said we're playing baseball. See, in network marketing, is simple steps. The people who complicate it don't make money. That's the thing that we have to understand. And, and, and the people who complicate it, they complicate it for profit. I, that's what I've observed. So I, I myself have personally experienced that when we keep it simple and it's a few steps, and even Eric Worre says that, if it's more than three steps, your system's complicated. And they're complicated for profit to be the one in their own land, not for money, because they never yes. make money. <laughs> exactly. So now we're going to go to third base, and we're at third base now. I just called him. I'm going to go over any objections he might have, or maybe he won't have them. Maybe he's going to talk to me a about my, my great weight loss product, whatever the product is, okay? And so now here we go. So uh, Sean, hey, did you have hey. a chance to get through the video or did you I, get distracted? I, I did, no, I got distracted a little bit, but I did get through it because I knew you were gonna call back. <laughs> and what did you like best about it? Uh, well, I mean, it's simple. And if, and if you said earlier, that's what you were, you were teaching me and I, I'm actually in the training process. Yes, sir. I, I, I can use that video too? Yes, yes, it's for okay. you, it's, for, it's a tool we use. So I, I like that it's simple, right? Because you know nobody can do what I do as a coach, but everybody can send the video. So I like that, I like that simple. And, and that's what everybody uses? Absolutely, it that about is it? our tool. Yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I like the simplicity of it, I like what it says. You know, my daddy always said, I've, I've never seen a bad resume and any marketing tool you send me is your resume. So I didn't think you'd send me a bad one. So I kind of like it. So it makes sense. So let me ask you this, Sean, based on what you saw, if you could have additional income coming in, I mean, the kind of income that would change your life, make such a difference in your life right now, how much would that be? Uh, well, I mean, uh, 10 grand a month would be 
you know, a good start. I know it doesn't happen overnight, but yeah, you said you got millionaires. So a hundred of them, I didn't, you probably not lying 99 times. So yeah, I, I'd like to get to that. Excellent. Excellent. And that is very doable, very doable. And I'll be honest with you. Some people get to it quicker than others. Some get to it quicker than others. It really just depends on how much time they're willing to commit to it and the quality of the people they bring on their team. And I want to help you to be able to do that. And I can so, count on you, right? Pardon? I can count on you. Oh, you can count on me. I'm in. Here, here's the thing I do is you're in, you, in this business, we're, we're in business by ourselves. I, I mean, you know, for ourselves. excuse me, for ourselves, but not by ourselves. There we go. For ourselves, not by ourselves. In other words, I would partner up with you in the journey, run with you in the journey and you have to understand that I'm already doing very well. My passion is to help people. If, but I can only help you if you help yourself, right? That makes yep. sense, right? Got it. So my job is to help you do your job. And if, if you do your job, then I have a job too. And that's, I want, that's why I want to help you. So let me ask you this. How much time do you think you would have uh, each week? Let's say just every week, how much time could you dedicate each week to this business, do you think? Well, <clears throat> I need to put enough in so I make sure I don't fail and I win. So you're going to tell me that because I got all the time right now. <laughs> if you have all the time, then brother, I tell you what, man, I'm going to, this is going to be fun. We're, we're going to oh, have listen, a, We got to the end of April till they lift the ban. So get me started. <laughs> okay. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So great. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm on board. And then, uh, you know, based on that time, Jeff, last 30 seconds, last 30 seconds, last, last. And based on that time, then, uh, how long would you be willing to, uh, dedicate that time each week for how many months would you be willing to do that to realize your 10,000? One of my, one of my great mentors used a simple word until. Okay. All right. Great. So then, and, and folks for training purposes, this is baseball. Now I'm bringing them into home base. So based on everything that you've seen in the video and what we've talked about, uh, Sean, is, is there anything else that, that you need to ask before you get started? Um, no, I'm ready to get going. Excellent, Sean. You know what? I'm, I really got to look forward to running with you, working with you. We're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to make a lot of money together. This is a partnership. Welcome aboard. Jeff Silvers, ladies and gentlemen. Great job, sir. Okay, so um, outstanding. Fernando, present for you. What was, uh, what was great about what just happened? Uh, a lot of things were great. It was the, definitely the fearlessness in which you, you presented. Um, I loved your transition, and from, your transition from his personal life to his business. Um, I love how congruent and you match and mirrored. You always had a, a response and you were able to be congruent with the stories, with the story of yours. Um, you were able to convey your identity in great ways. Like when you said, my business is booming. That's all you had to say. It was in the way you said it. That was the heroic, unique identity. And then um, your green and, and, the hun and the hundred millionaires didn't hurt either. Yes. And the hundred millionaires did not hurt either. Um, and just overall, your ability to step into, into agreement formation, like, this is it. Like, this is the place. If you want to do 10,000, this is it. So it was your confidence. And then I had a few areas um, where I would say were possible for growth, but Sean, I'll pass it back to you. Yeah, no, go ahead. Jump in on the, on the growth spots as you saw them. Because remember, if we, we talk about this all the time, um, right. everybody, right? The, if you're in the 99th, this is my favorite way to say it. You all know this. If it's in the 99th percentile, you make $400,000. If you're in the 99.9 .9 percentile, you make 1.7 million. 99.99, 7.8 million. 99.999, you're making $56 million. So in the, once you're in the top 1%, micro distinctions, just a couple of micro distinctions could be 120x differential in your income. It could be the difference between having 100 and 150 millionaires, right? Like micro, micro distinctions for all of us, me, Jeff. Sean, these are iconic salespeople and leaders. I assess myself through the same prism and formula every day, continuously. So with that said, Fernando, um, what you have is access points. I have a few myself, these micro distinctions, because these two gentlemen are in the 99s. They're yeah. in the 99s. And if we could add one more nine, you know, 0.9 somewhere, maybe they're 90.99s, one more nine, like it's, it's exponential, the acceleration, because they're already great 
masters of what they're doing. Go ahead, Fernando. Yeah, so definitely masters. Um, we do, you know, tons of these role plays and seeing two people that are able to, one, be able to role play and two, convey and be in this process so flawlessly is uh, just not normal. And both of you gentlemen are not normal. So what I would say <laughs> that is a great growth area is um, in step one, building emotional rapport, both started in question two, where are you now versus uh, where have you been? So I would say, Jeff, you jumped, you jumped back into it uh, at some point, like what got you in? Um, so you started in where have you been and then eventually went back to where have you been? So being congruent in those questions and two would be 5D listening. So before you transition from personal to business, uh, Sean was talking about lacrosse and being the captain or on the board has something to do with lacrosse. And that was a great intersection. You decided to keep moving forward, not right or wrong. That would have been a great 5D unique lacrosse. Like you're an adult, you're doing this, you're lacrosse. Like that is an interesting point to lean into to continue to go from where have you been and just go away from business and really speak about personal. So I would say those two things. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, I was thinking that, Jeff, too. So Sean, so lacrosse, sophomore year, um, where's this all? Like, how does this fit into your son's life? Well, he wants to go to Notre Dame, and we told Boom. him. Boom. Stop. Stop. The Stop. reason Jeff – no, no, don't. You're not sorry. The reason Sean – I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> the reason Sean said lacrosse, my son, thankfully he's only a sophomore, is because he's got – his son and Sean have huge dreams about his lacrosse future. And he would have loved to tell you, Jeff – that he wants his son to be with the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame. Would you enjoy saying that, don't you, Sean? Mm -hmm. You happen to be Irish, don't you, Sean? Oh, just a wee bit. God bless us. <laughs> God bless us. <laughs> and you, you, happen to, you happen to like the, the, the Fighting Irish in Notre Dame, Notre Dame, the Golden Dome, a little bit, yeah. yes? Oh, just a wee bit. <laughs> yeah. He's even breaking into accents. So here's the access point for everybody listening. You go, oh, not a big deal. Listen, this is not about the idea that, that Jeff – doesn't get to yes an extraordinary amount of time. Mm -hmm. This is about duplication through 750,000 people. If 750,000 people are trained to just have people breaking into Irish accents and laughing, I'm, gonna, I'm going to suggest that there will be a percentage shift across 750,000 people. That's the work we're doing here. It's these micro distinctions that create that acceleration. So now, we have Sean talking with an Irish accent, laughing, beaming with pride, feeling mm. seen, heard, and what he says matters. Because that brother talks to a lot of humans. I'm going to make you bet that it is not that often, Sean, and tell me the truth, that people ask you the question I asked you to elicit your ability to say Notre Dame. Is that a fair statement? You may say it, but how many people ask you the questions to bring you there? Is that common? No, no. Yeah. And when I do that, when I do that, how does that, does that increase meaningfully how you feel about me? Yes. Yeah. So that's all, that's mm. all we're doing. And, and, Very and good point. yeah. And the integrity part of this. Well, and it's not so much the, from a, that I feel better about you. It's, I feel better. You made me feel better about me. Yeah. Right. So I, it, how it showed up. Right. Somebody throws a yeah. bucket of ice cream out the truck that I was looking for. Oh, I feel good. Thank you. I never get to see you again. But but now yeah. the relationship continues. So, yes, you make yeah. me feel good. And I, I need more of you. <laughs> yeah. And under the principle of reciprocity and liking, as Robert Cialdini talks about in the book Influence, like those oh, principles make, <laughs> yeah, make people want to you know, come forward. So so I'd say that and the only other thing I would share. And I know we're, we're just about to wrap. Because genius. So I'd be looking for those, those opportunities to ask questions more deeply of things that, are, that, are most, that matter most and are meaningful. Uh, in addition, I would say, uh, and Jeff got real close in this space. I think there was an opportunity to have Sean share a little bit more about his frustration with where things are right now. He was talking about mm. technology problems, issues. I heard that there's some stress and fear sitting there and allowing people authentically and with integrity to connect to the very real pain they're feeling. I always say this, Sean, Jeff, everybody. We, 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 may, we take action out of pain. So there's some pain for Sean. And connecting him to that pain right before you offer him the opportunity 
because we're, we're competing with two pains. We're competing with the pain of not moving forward and the pain of moving forward. Pain of moving forward equals fear of rejection, fear of failure. Mm. We talk about it in the program a lot. So mm. we're up against, and the yes, getting to the yes, we're up against their fear of failure, fear of rejection. So mm. we got to put some pain, connect them to another pain, which is the missing out scarcity of the future and destiny. But with those things said, this is as good as it gets. You guys are straight up geniuses and warriors, and I cannot thank you enough. Fi Jeff, final, final, uh, final 30 seconds. What was present for you in this experience, Jeff? Um, what I loved about it was authenticity because you see difference in styles. Again, personalities coming out. That's why what I love about network marketing is you don't have to be a special person. Yes. It just takes special efforts. In other words, we, we've got to step up and do more than what the masses do if we want to be successful. But we can be successful, but we don't have to be special. So being, uh, so authenticity and originality, I'd say that would be the next one, originality, yeah. fitting in with that. Yeah. So let me, let me share this, Jeff. I couldn't agree more. Thank you. I'm going to kick this on for final, final. Um, I want to tell you how not special I am. When I was 17 years old, the biggest concern my parents had or frustration was that when their friends would come over, I wouldn't say hello because I was so shy. Mm. My sophomore year of college at Columbia University, where two years later I would be the unanimous selection as baseball captain, every single day of my second semester, I eat lunch by myself in my car. That's a true story. I, am, I would prefer to be reading, sit on a beach alone and thinking, mm. as opposed to connecting with people, making, I love people, but like thinking about big moves for people. And yet I had to recalibrate and learn how to make that happen person to person. So anybody listening to this, because I do sound special, Jeff, you sound special, Sean, you sound special, Fernando, you sound special. So anybody who's listening to this, these are all people. Jeff had enormous financial challenges. I'm sure, I'm sure Sean did at some points too. Fernando did. I did. We all did. We, we have mastered acceleration in this space over time. And so will you if you pay attention to the principles these geniuses are sharing today. So, Sean, any final thoughts? Jeff, please tell Michelle I said hello. I saw her walk by and smile and wave. <laughs> I love her. Please give her a big She hug. was curious about what we were doing. La Thank last you. thoughts are this. <clears throat> Who you are speaks so loud, the person can't hear what you're saying, whether it's on a phone call, in an email, or in a text. If you get clear on your, on your emotional fortitude, your story is your strength, your message, your message. Just listen to what these guys are sharing with you. They have a formula for you to unlock your greatness. And when you choose to plug into the formula and not try to reinvent it, until you get better than that in the message convey, I'd convey the message that they're sending you. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sean. And if anybody is interested in moving forward business opportunities in the space of network marketing, you're, you're listening to and talking to the people to do with. And I mean that with all my heart. These are straight up icons, geniuses, warriors. So, Our boy from Ohio, 0. 0.9 grade point average. <laughs> Amazing. So, uh, Jeff, Sean, thank you. Fernando, taking us home. Any other thoughts? Thank you, all of you. It's not about right or wrong. It's all about where you land on the scale of mastery. Sean, Jeff, thank you for your you know, wizardry and your ability to be in communication. I agree with what Sean Murphy said. Um, it's about plugging in, committing to mastery, pausing. It's not about unlearning what you're learning. It's what you've learned. It's about committing to a language um, that is in service of having people feel heard, seen, and understood. Uh, my name's Fernando Valencia. This is the Unblinded Real Raw Sales Role Play, and we'll see you on the morning huddle. If you'd like to join us, it's free every single morning. 8.30 to 9 o'clock, 500 people, dozens of countries, hundreds more joining in daily. And that's unblindedhuddle.com. We love you all. And we'll see you on the next huddle. Bye-bye. We are all blind and just learning to see. Just learning to see. Bye, Mr. Callaghan. Thank you, guys.